So our goal for today's video is to answer the question, can this hunter build carry my two random teammates from an LFG post in a Grandmaster Nightfall for that sweet loot? Can this build carry? Well, here's a quick sneak peek to the results. And as you can see, I put two guardians in my backpack today. And I also didn't use any cheese in the boss room whatsoever. We cleared it in about 25 minutes, so I'd say that's pretty good for an LFG group. And I think that's how good this build is when you understand it and play it properly. The LFG finder was introduced this season, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have been using it already, and have probably come across some very interesting guardians in your LFG experiences. I ran a GM the other day with someone using Ashen Wakes for the solar fusion grenades, but they were on the Void Titan subclass. So you never know what you get when it comes to LFG, and you need to be able to make up for those blueberries and possibly put them in your backpack for a nice little ride. Since we have such a long season ahead of us, I've been thinking about making this a little series, something like carry the team, or does this build carry, and just make LFG post with the Destiny 2 finder, and only run Grandmasters with these builds, and see if we can't help some people clear those Grandmasters, and show off builds that truly can carry you and your fire team if you use those builds correctly. So let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. And anyone that says builds aren't that important in Destiny, well for us average players it is pretty important because it makes things a lot easier on yourself and your team when you lean into something strongly and play it properly. This build was brought to my attention from my Discord. I did some tweaking and it turned out great so thank you for that. I am sure these two randoms with me loved the carry. Now this entire build is centered around the threaded specter aspect and our gambler's dodge ability. The threaded specter is activating your class ability leaves behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. And just look at the meatball when we leave it in front of him. Look how easy it is for our two teammates and myself to do damage or do whatever we want to do because it's so distracted and they take a lot of damage, which is the second part of the aspect after taking significant damage or when combatants approach, the decoy detonates, dealing damage and releasing threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. Well, that initial detonate will kill pretty much any red bars in the game and those threadlings will seek out enemies and attack them for added damage. But the main part is just that decoy. It can be anywhere up to like 10 seconds for you to do what you want while something's shooting at the decoy. And the rest of the build is centered around making sure we have this decoy available all the time. We do take Gambler's Dodge even though it does have a 10 second longer cooldown because when we dodge near enemies we get our full melee back. It's actually really strong in PvE. It got a couple buffs the last two seasons. It hits multiple enemies, procs multiple mods for us, and it severs every target it hits, up to five targets. That just means that target is doing 40% less damage to you and your fire team, which is great. We pair this with a shackle grenade. In endgame content, a shackle grenade is still very strong. You could run the grapple grenade with this, but I was liking shackle way more and I actually tried all three grenades. For your second aspect, we do take Whirling Maelstrom. This is just destroying that tangle, creates that Whirling Maelstrom, and that'll chase enemies around, do damage over time for 10 seconds straight, and if it kills anything, it will unravel and spread that unravel. But the cool thing is if we apply unravel any other ways, it will also spread it just by doing its damage over time. The four fragments we're gonna take with the build is Thread of Rebirth. Strand Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create a Threadling. This just plays right into the season really strongly, and as you can see in the gameplay, Threadlings pop out left and right all over the place. Our second fragment will be Threat of Evolution then, which Threadlings travel further and deal additional damage. This lets them hit 33% harder, which is great, because if you don't have this on, they're not very good. For the last two fragments, these are staples in any strand build. We'll take Threat of Warding, so we pick up that Orb of Power, grants us Woven Mail. We're going to be creating so many Orbs of Power that you're going to have this up non-stop. And then we also take Threat of Generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. This plays really great into Threadlings and our Whirling Maelstrom, because those Threadlings will always be doing damage, Whirling Maelstrom will always be doing damage, and the Debuff Unravel will always be dealing damage to a lot of different targets on the field. Now the weapon you see most in the gameplay that I was pairing this with is Final Warning. Final Warning has one of the highest DPS for a primary weapon. And I know a lot of people think it's a little clunky to use at times, but if you get the pattern down, it's so strong, guys. You just hold your trigger down for like half a second. You don't even need to let it charge all the way and then just let it go of the trigger. You'll shoot off 10 bullets in a row and then repeat that process one more time. That's it. Once you just get used to its rhythm, it's a lot easier to use, trust me. But if you really don't like Final Warning, you could trade this out for other strand weapons. I'm sure the main one a ton of you will probably use is Quicksilver Storm. And again, it's really good as well. But Final Warning is a sidearm, so it's anti-barrier this season, which is great. And it applies the Unravel debuff all on its own. So in future seasons, when you don't have Unraveling Orbs, this is just an easy way to apply Unravel for free. Now our exotic of choice is Six Coyote. This is just simple, it's gain a second dodge charge. 
And with a build that's all about dodging and leaving those clones, this is perfect for us. I mean, basically treat it like invisibility for you and your entire fire team for as long as that clone stays alive. Now, if it's taking heavy, heavy firepower from everything, it'll only last three or four seconds, but that is plenty of time to reposition yourself, whereas other times it'll last like 10 or 12 seconds. Now, the mods on the build are really important with this build. It really feeds that class ability and keeps the loop going really smooth. On the helmet, we do take two harmonic siphons. This allows us to gen orbs of power with that final warning sidearm and since final warning hits so hard and kills red bars so fast we get double kills left and right with this we also slot a heavy ammo finder just for some extra heavy throughout activities we're playing on the gauntlets we take heavy handed so our melee can spawn an orb of power every 10 seconds when it kills something your melee will be getting kills for you since you have two available dodges you are using gambler's dodge so literally your combo of abilities should be throw your threaded spike and then dodge. You've now used your powered melee ability, you've left a clone on the field, but yet you have your powered melee back and you still have a second dodge from Six Coyote. So you can see how the gameplay loops. You could either go into using your next melee ability and dodging again, or the best way to do it is then use your final warning after you've thrown that first combo of melee and dodge, because you can easily get a double kill while your clone is still up. If you get that double kill, you're gonna spawn two orbs of power instantly. One from the harmonic siphons we already went over, and then one from Reaper mod, which is on your class item, which allows you to spawn an orb of power after you kill something after dodging. Now for the other two mods on the gauntlets, we're gonna take Focusing Strike. So this grants class ability energy when we hit stuff with our powered melee attack, which we just went over, we always have. And then also impact induction causing damage with the melee attack reduces our grenade cooldown. So we're just feeding our abilities with that melee over and over. On the chest piece, you take one damage reduction mod, and then I like to use charged up with this build. This increases our maximum number of stacks to four charges, which plays right into our boots, stacks on stacks mod which picking up an orb of power grants you one additional stack of armor charge. So now when we pick up two orbs of power, we get four stacks of armor charge. And I just went over how we're spawning two orbs of power instantly after we throw our melee and dodge, and just two final blows with your weapon. And your melee could still spawn an orb of power if it killed something. For the other two mods on your boots, we take recuperation, so we get healing on orb pickup, and you are picking up at least two orbs in your combo. And then we take insulation, which reduces our class ability cooldown when we pick up an orb of power. On the class item, two really important mods that we already went over one of them is Reaper. Again, that spawns us an orb of power with a weapon kill after we dodge. And how we're gonna use all our armor charges is utility kickstart. We'll get about 30 to 35% of our dodge back instantly. And since dodge has such a quick cooldown in the game, you'll see yourself having dodge up all the time. And then we also just take a bomber on the class item to feed that grenade when we are dodging quite often. For your overall stats on the build, 100 resilience is the first one you want to hit. And then you wanna push your mobility up as high as possible. This plays right into our dodge and leaving our clones. So the higher you can hit on mobility, the better. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.